Right before I drive away to forget Why do I give a damn at everything we say up? G'day guys, Chaos Chronicles. All right, so we're back with another video today. And um, so I've been getting asked to do some videos on um, ice and ice use and whatnot. So let's get into it. All right, so from the outset, you know, I'm sure you all know it's a very, very addictive drug um, that generally people get addicted like hooked from the first time they try it and um yeah it's just a, a a vicious cycle of just crapness like all around um you know people will lie to you they will steal from you um and yeah it's just very very horrible so i thought we'd talk about you know some of my um experiences inside and outside of prison and um you know just highlighting how putrid it is and um just the crazy things that people do on it and um and think that you know no one's watching them or nobody knows and like this is a message to all the ice users we all know that you use it you can tell us that you don't and this and that but like the general consensus is we know that you're using it um so yeah i mean um with myself, I I had this thing um, that was just crazy. It was like from as soon as I and obviously I've spoke to you guys about this before. I've never used a needle in my life, so you know usually when I'm talking about taking drugs, it's either talking about smoking them or swallowing them. Um, there has been a few times I have put some things inside my butt to get high, just to see if it worked, and it does. I tried it twice just to make sure. <laughs> um, but, yeah, um, with me, you know, I, I always just thought that people were trying to kill me all, all the time um, and there wasn't anything anyone could say or do that was going to change my mind that people weren't trying to kill me. Um, and, um, yeah, so I'm going to tell you a, a few um, stories that, that happened with myself and... Um, so yeah, um, you know this was so. Also, I might I might add that that I wasn't an ice user for very long, and thank God because like I was like literally like on the biggest downward spiral. It was just crazy and ruining my life. So, um, you know, I got out of prison, and um, I was on non-association laws because of the bike club shit, and um, obviously wasn't allowed to use any drugs and had to do very frequent urine tests whilst I was on parole and um yeah so when I completed parole obviously after doing years and years and years in prison I kind of thought that um I was owed some partying and so I really made up for this and and also I might add that um you know um it wasn't when I went to prison, so ice was still like a recreational drug. So people were using it for the rave scene and this and that and just partying on the weekends and this and that. Um, and, you know, obviously in that nine years that I'd done in prison, um, it, it like quantified, like it was just crazy how bad the ice use got. And I seen it all firsthand. I would see the people coming in and out of prison and, um, you know, I would see these guys that would leave prison looking schmick as, you know, like got the muscles and, you know, um, just looking good and feeling healthy and, and, and loving the way they look and that. And um, I would see them come back like just a just a skeleton and, and like it would happen so quick. So, like, I would see guys get released and then, like, three weeks later, like, say, a bloke would get, released 105 kilos you know big looking looking mad and um yeah and then three weeks later they come rolling through the um the the prison doors again and they are absolute skeletons and absolutely speaking hogwash too takes people a long time to get their you know their their real brain back after stop using ice and the truth is the sad truth is that a lot of people um don't get that back and they stay cooked forever 
which is, you know, which is sad because I don't think a lot of these people understand the the whirlwind that they're in because that's a thing with ice. Everyone thinks that nobody um, nobody knows what's going on, um, but everyone knows that you're on ice and you can tell, you know, you've got the jaw swinging, erratic movements, speaking absolute shit and, um, yeah, we, we know that you are on it. You can't hide it. Um, but, but yeah. And so, you know, that when I got out, um, people were telling me how bad it was outside and I suppose I could never imagine how bad it was. So I used to sell this stuff before I, um, before I got arrested and, um, you know, I, I seen it all, but this was still when people were doing it recreational and I still, in my wildest dreams, I couldn't imagined, um, or nightmares, should I say, how bad society actually was. And, um, yeah, so it was just so easy for me to jump back into that kind of routine and, and very quickly, um, you know, got roped into smoking it every day and things got things got pretty bad pretty quick and you know like i've said this before it was only a month or two i was doing this but i i unraveled really quick so i'm gonna tell you this story so i was i'd been um smoking ice and um you know had been wigging out and was kind of this was kind of just before i um i stopped it and this was kind of the thing that made me stop it so anyway, over the the past few weeks, I've been getting wigging out and thinking I could hear people in my backyard and um, and there wasn't anyone there. And um, But I thought that I could hear people in my roof and I was absolutely 100% certain and no one could tell me that I wasn't hearing people in the roof. And um, yeah, I guess one morning um, I, I just had enough. I thought I could hear um, people in my roof had become daylight. I thought I'm going to get them out of this roof. Don't worry about that. And now I need you to keep in mind, I had, um, my two teenage kids that were staying in the house with me at the time. And, um, yeah, so they were staying over and, um, um, I, I thought I, I, I had heard pe- people in the roof and I was going to put a stop to it. So I ran outside and I got the pitchfork. And I ran straight back inside and just started pumping holes in my roof of my room where I thought that I could hear people in my roof. And, um, you know, in my mind, I thought that I was just going to see blood come dripping down straight away. I know that sounds pretty morbid, but in my head, you know, I thought people were trying to kill me. And, you know, for me, it was a life and death situation. And, um yeah it's just crazy but um you know i'm poking these holes and i'm not seeing blood coming down and i'm i'm losing it i'm like why isn't that happening so i I ran back out into the backyard again and i went up to the barbecue and i started unscrewing the barbecue um the gas bottle for the barbecue so I, i left the hose on the gas bottle and unscrewed it right at the barbecue i ran back inside went to the kitchen got the kitchen chair went into my bedroom, stood on the kitchen chair and then put the hose up in through the roof and started letting gas go into the roof for, for a fair while, um, you know, and then my, my kids had woken up and, and said, what the fuck are you doing, Dad? I'm like, there's someone in the roof. And they're like, there's no one in the fucking roof. And, um, yeah, um, I, I, I didn't. I wanted to believe that there was no one in the roof, but I, there was no way anyone could tell me any different. And so anyway, they convinced me to turn the gas bottle off and, um, yeah, eventually talked me down. But, um, you know, that's pretty crazy. All it would have taken is, you know, one flick from the light switch or anything like that, any kind of electrical spark and, you know, would have blown it to kingdom come with my family in it. And, um, you know... It was this time that, that, that my kids said to me that, you know, if we, we hear that you are touching it again, that's it. We are out of your life. And um, so I really took that on board and, and um, yeah, stopped, stopped using it um, from that time. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely crazy to think that 
all the things that I used to do and, and that, and I actually used to think that all these things were happening and no one could tell me any different. And, um, yeah, it's just bonkers that, I don't know. I don't even know why people take it. Like I never, never can remember myself enjoying myself on meth at all. And um, it's pretty, pretty putrid. And, you know, when I look back, I think, why was I doing it? I was never enjoying myself from the moment I used to put that pipe to my my um, mouth and inhaled that putrid stuff into my lungs. My brain just went into overdrive straight away. And, and yeah, I just started getting paranoid and it was just, just putrid and, um, yeah, you know, this is a very common thing, um, of, of in my whole time of, um, you know, being in the criminal world, I, I am, have met very few people that can be everyday ice users and still function like normal people. Um, and I mean, very, very few people like, um, yeah, it's just, it's very hard to function like a normal human being and it's so sad because people are stuck in this cycle and, you know, a lot of them don't even see that they're in this cycle, which is which is sad and, um, you know, like I said before, we can all see it but the thing is, the people when they're on it, you know, from the first time when you try it, it's like, damn, it, it's kind of like this euphoria that, you you know, you can't explain but... Um, you know, that is short lived. And, um, you know, um, that is why it's so addictive. And I don't want to give it any more props, because I don't want people to go try it because of what I've said, you know, and which is going to lead me to say, ne never ever anything I'm saying is promoting drug use or crime or anything like that. And um, I always say that, um, you know, I'm I'm not a preacher, I'm a prime example. So basically what that's saying is if you do exactly what I was doing when I talk about me being, you know, in trouble with the law and doing drugs and this and that, then you're going to be in trouble with the law and you're going to be, you know, in trouble with drugs and that. And, um, you know, it, with most drugs, I'm going to be honest, it's hard for people to function like a normal human being when they're on it. And, you know, I will just say that, you know, probably weed's the only one I've come across where people can function, you know, with, with a little bit of normality and, you know, um, all these other powdered drugs and, you know, hallucinogens obviously, but, you know, they all alter your perception. Um, and so you're not thinking straight when you're on it. And, um, you know, I don't like that. I don't like being, not being able to figure out what's going on and stuff like that and so ice for me was just a just a a crazy thing and you know um when i think back i i, I never not passed out on ice even when i think about when i was on it in prison and you know um i, I said to people i only done it twice and 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 that's about the truth and and in these times i i, I wigged out you know and i um i went and took everybody's shanks in the yard where I knew where they were and um, threw them all in bins and that so they were out of the yard and, um, you know, I, I look back and think I was just passing out this whole time and then, you know, I can think of another time before I went to prison where I passed out and, um, you know, could have was in presence of people where I could have got hurt if, you know, and but I didn't and um, so, you know, um it's not a good drug and absolutely there's no positives to it. Um, I can never think of one good happy time where I had fun when I was on it. So it's pretty, pretty put putrid and um, yeah, I don't recommend anyone ever try ice. You know, it's just a really, really horrible cycle and I hope that if there are people watching this right now that I might have, you know, a light bulb's gone off in your head and thought, damn, what he's saying is real. And, you know, maybe people can see that I'm trip, tripped out and wigging out all the time. And because we can tell, if you think that we can't tell that you're on ice, you are, you are cooked. And, um, you know, but yeah, there you go, guys. Um, ice, it's a very, very putrid cycle, you know, and um, I don't know what else I can talk, you know, I could think of a million things I could say and talk about crazy stories and this and that, but, um, you know, 
it's only going to take one or two stories to, to make people realise how crazy it is. And like, I, you know, I, I openly admitted that that some of the things that I did was crazy and put, put other people in danger. And, you know, I hate myself for that. And I'm glad I hate myself for it because I'll never, ever touch it again. And um, you actually couldn't pay me any amount of money to take that um, for multiple reasons. But um, anyway, guys, there you go. That is ice. It's a very putrid, putrid cycle. Um, don't do drugs. Don't do crime. And you won't end up in prison. All right, guys. Chaos Chronicles, we out. I am also the guy who decides if you and your friends walk the out of here or not.